morning. I'm actually on my way out to the woods and driving past this lake. I couldn't resist taking a few photos to go with today's video. This is why I like autumn. It has nothing to do with the color. It's the weather. And I'm always a sucker for clouds drifting over the forest. All right, enough of this. Let's uh, let's head out into the forest. Today's about high ISO, like 3200 in digital. How close does that digital noise resemble film grain? That's something I've been very curious about. And as you may know, when I'm curious about something, I uh, take you along for the video. <laughs> this is something that I don't know why it's taking me this long to even study or test or, or look at. Whoa there, Video David. To be clear, you're not saying you've never shot high SO before. You were a journalist for gosh sakes. <laughs> you just never used this camera for that kind of work. And you have thought that high ISO wasn't a good option for your nature and landscape photography. You thought it was something to be avoided. You've never considered shooting that way on purpose or as a usable option for landscape work. Okay, now that we've got that cleared up, back to the video, David. I rarely shoot above ISO 400 or, or, or even above base ISO. I'm always with the tripod. When I'm shooting film, I'm shooting the slowest film. I haven't really looked at what's acceptable for grain or what's acceptable noise levels for me. So that's what we're out here to do today. 3200. Does it look like film grain? <laughs> we'll see. I don't have a tripod with me. I mean, there's not much reason for it. Because there are times when I'd, I'd like to be out with a lighter gear or I just don't want to carry a tripod around. I'm not anti-tripod. Anybody that watches this channel knows I'm pretty much glued to a tripod all the time. I learned photography way back in the film days. <laughs> way back. And back then, grain was considered uh, image quality bust, you know, the grain got into your image, that wasn't the good thing. We considered that degrading the image. And so we would do everything we could to get finer grain or not blow up our images so big. We'd go to medium format, large format, and often it was to mitigate grain. We didn't want to see it. In the past, I've said, I'm not a big fan of green, but something's happened over the last year or two. And uh, it's not that I, it used to be I tolerated it, but now I'm almost wanting it in some of my images, or at least a little bit. Even the fine grain film that I use, it still has a texture. It still has enough grain in it to, to know that it's there. Then digital came along. And that made it easier to not have the green. Then we had noise. And we were still shooting at base ISO and, and then the cameras got better and better. But still I was judging the quality based on the, the amount of noise and grain in an image. But there's been a real shift in my taste over the last couple of years. It's been gradual. And I went from I went from medium format film to large format film, thinking I wanted more resolution, less grain. And what I noticed was as I kept going up, it kind of looked like digital to me. It started looking too clean. And it was silly to, to uh, shoot a big negative for me and not, uh, and try to get grain out of it. I just felt like that was, was kind of weird. And I ended up back at 35 millimeter because it didn't look like digital to me, or at least I didn't think it did. Oh, oh good girl. Uh. 
I bet you never get tired of seeing me climb over logs. <laughs> this old man and his old bones just, just don't do it like they used to. Way out here, I stopped and made a few uh, weather shots across the lake with the clouds in, in the hills. And that should simulate a grainy sky for me. I, I was actually quite fortunate to come across that because I thought I was just going to be in the, in the forest where the grain might, uh, or the noise might blend in better. So we're gonna get a good test of it today. Now I just need to find a few images to, uh, to make. I'll probably revisit a couple places I've already shot because I already know there's gonna be something I can use to compare it. And I've shot these places in film and digital before, but not at a high ISOs. So let's go. It's a little overgrown since last time I was out here. Well, I'm sure you, if you see my channel, you might recognize these boulders. I just love how they're kind of right out here in the middle of the woods. I've got my camera set up to show monochrome JPEGs and I have the yellow filter on. It adds a little more contrast, <clears throat> gives me a realistic idea of what I'm getting here. This is pretty uh, liberating, I have to say. Like I said, I'm not anti-tripod. -tri the tripod is very valuable to me. But to be able to kind of just move through the scene and, and make photos as I go is, that's pretty cool. Today's a, a good example. It's, it's really dark in here and <clears throat> even 3200s may not be fast enough to get enough depth of field. Luckily I'm, I'm using a 20 millimeter. So depth of field is a little easier to get. And I could, I could even hold, hand holding it, I could probably focus stack. But I don't really want to do that today. I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> but we are starting at 3200, F8, F11 in there. There's some pokes too, gives me more light. This is quite a neat spot. And I have some good images here, so if, I don't, if these don't turn out, I'm not that worried about it because I photographed this a number of times.
now that we've got some images made with my old Nikon D810 digital camera, let's do a little pixel peeping. Woohoo! <laughs> to be honest, I didn't expect to see a whole lot here that would make me question why I'm even shooting black and white film. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing opportunities when I wanted to go light. When I first opened up the RAW file shot at 3200, I was, well, underwhelmed. This old camera just doesn't blow me away at high ISOs, but I, I didn't expect it to. I was just seeing a lot of color noise and unpleasant color shift in many of the files. I had pretty much all but written off the idea that I would get film-like results from these files. But I pushed on and, and started the conversion process anyway, using Affinity Photo and Silver Effects too. On this first photo with a bunch of sky, when you punch in and remove the color noise, it takes on a much nicer texture. Even at 3200, I have to magnify the shot quite a bit to really see the effects. In the future, I may need to push the ISO even more to, just to see what, how that changes the aesthetics of the image. But I do find that the texture in the sky does have a, a film-like feel to it. When we get to the four shots, what I'm seeing has kind of shook my world. It's kind of challenged the preconceived ideas I had on what I'd see in this test. Not only do the images have a film-like structure or texture to my eye, the tonality looks remarkably <laughs> like the film shots I, I get. I'm seeing what almost looks like a glow in the lighter background areas. And that may have to do with the depth of field dropping off combining with the noise structure. But for whatever reason, it really has that kind of film look to me. The images are plenty sharp for my uses. This really could be a good example of why you don't always need maximum depth of field to have a pleasing photograph. When doing this test, I did one shot at ISO 5000. In hindsight, I wish I had to push that ISO even higher because I, what I'm seeing is the 5000 doesn't look a whole lot different than the 3200. I was sure that 3200 would be beyond what I would consider usable. When we get to the detail shots and we punch into the background, the out of focus areas, the grain or the noise does look more apparent. But you've got to really magnify it quite a bit to, to really see it. It's a lot more apparent than the in-focus areas and the lighter areas. Doing handheld shots of details really seemed to be a, a real strong possibility. I have to admit I'm a little surprised by what I was seeing in these images. I'm reluctant to make any final conclusions to what I've been seeing. This is something I'm going to have to live with for a while and kind of study these files. I've said in the past that I like the look of my black and white film images better than my digital black and white. I've also said it could very well be that I just don't know how to edit my digital black and white files to get the tones I'm looking for. And after inspecting these photos, I'm starting to think maybe the problem wasn't how I was editing the photos, but how I was shooting the images in the first place. Who would have thought that using my digital camera with settings that should give me less image quality has given me the quality I'm looking for? <laughs> so does ISO 3200 look like film grain? Well, I think it looks more like film grain than I expected it to. I think this little test has created more questions than answers for me, but it has shown me that I shouldn't write off my digital camera for doing black and white photography that there might be a time where grabbing my D810 makes more sense than grabbing my film camera. And thanks for coming along on this little trip of discovery. Hopefully I've shown you something that you, you didn't notice before or something that has triggered some ideas that you might want to try. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.